everyone it is a matter of great pleasure for me to welcome you all for one day international seminar on sciences for sustainable development on this occasion of who un world science day this international seminar is a part of unesco's movement towards education for sustainable development education for health and well being and global citizenship education it is organized by international council for education research and training that is icert icert is an autonomous non government leading scientific and professional research and training organization with offices located in washington dc california sydney new delhi and other countries with several educators researchers consultants and students as its members icert not only develops educational training programs but also manages institutes and promotes research and training in education globally this is an institution of learning and training facilitating education research and social welfare initiatives with the motto knowledge wisdom and prosperity we at icert are working with a mission to promote the advancement and application of scientific research and knowledge to benefit the society now coming to the today's seminar world science day for peace and development highlights the significant role of sciences in society and emerging scientific issues it also underlines the importance and relevance of science in our daily lives it aims to ensure that citizens are kept informed of developments in science it also underscores the role of scientists they play in broadening our understanding of the remarkable fragile planet we call home and in making our society more sustainable science is a beautiful gift to humanity it must be cherished to uplift sustainable development development for future generations development for green future development for upgradation every nation every nation has a message to deliver a mission to fulfill a destiny to reach and for us it is to attain sustainable development and that through science and technology now let me give you quick overview of instructions for the participants the webinar duration will be 2 hours plus minus 15 minutes please follow the digital ethics and keep your mic off don't write unnecessary messages in the chat box there is no attendance link as attendance is automatically recorded all the candidates who will attend at least 75% of the time duration will get the certificate for participation there are total two sessions in today's program if you have any questions for the honorable resource person speakers you could raise your hand or request to unmute at the end of the session we will unmute you or you could write your question in the chat box question answer session will be conducted towards the end attendance and participation certificate will be issued in 10 to 15 days after this program please don't write unnecessary emails before 10 days for forthcoming programs of icert please visit our official website www.icert.org.in certificates for the previous programs are dispatched if you have not received the certificate of any previous program please do write at icertpdp@gmail.com or icertseminars@gmail.com there is one special announcement for today that icert in collaboration with the department of defense studies jyotiba phule government college radhaur yamuna nagar and the ages of kurukshetra university haryana is organizing a two day international multidisciplinary conference on contemporary approaches and challenges in education health management and research on november 25 26 2022 in kurukshetra university applications are invited for teaching professionals academicians research scholars with teaching experience for the award of molana abul kalam azad education excellence award 
This award formally recognizes the excellent contribution of exceptional educator to student community and the society. Now, I would like to welcome Dr. Navneet Ma'am, our Executive Director, Education, ICRT. Dr. Navneet Ma'am is an educator and leader with an experience of more than 22 years in the field of education and more than 10 years in school administration and leadership. She is a PhD holder, master in commerce, master in education, and higher diploma in software engineering and B.Ed. in yoga. She has participated in various workshops, seminars, conferences, FTPs, symposiums, and facilitated with several awards and is a member of various organizations and forums. She is a lady with the words of wisdom, the backbone of ICRT, I welcome you, ma'am, the chief patron of the program, Dr. Navneet Kaur. Thank you, Dr. Dilpreet, for such a wonderful welcome of each and every person. Greetings to all. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We are here globally together again. I can see different faces and now I remember you all. It's really wonderful and we feel fortunate to have you all on this platform. On behalf of ICERT, International Council of Education Research and Training. I, Dr. Navneet Kaur, Executive Director Education, welcome you all in today's webinar, Sciences for Sustainable Development. It is my pleasure to acknowledge both the eminent resource persons of today. What a great resume they have. Dilpreet will be sharing with you all. Dr. Loganatham Veermuthu, welcome, sir, and Ms. Pratishtha Gupta, both the resource person, CBSE person is here with us. We welcome you, sir. It's it's privilege for us to have you on the board. Uh, at times when humanity must invent new ways of producing, traveling, and heating, we know we need the basic sciences and the potential they possess. More than ever, we must allow the basic sciences to expand in all directions in order to explore, investigate, and experiment. For this capacity to imagine, innovate, and discover will determine whether we are able to rise to the major challenges of our time or not. And this is the basic aim of ICERT. It is producing researchers, trainers, educators, because world need them. Today, we are celebrating this World Science Day for Peace and Development which highlights the important role of science in society and the need to engage the wider public in debates on emerging scientific issues. By linking science more closely with society, World Science Day for Peace and Development aims to ensure that citizens are kept informed of developments in science. It also underscores the role of scientists playing broadening our understanding of the remarkable fragile planet we call home and in making our societies more sustainable. So with this hope, with the same, with this thought, we are here with both the resource persons who are going to enlighten us on this topic. I'll move back to Dilpreet. Please, let's start. Thank you. So I'll first introduce our today's first resource person, Dr. Loganath Viramuthu. Dr. Loganathan Viramuthu, doctoral researcher, Institute of Organic and Polymer Materials Research and Development Center of Smart Textile Technology, National Tepe University of Technology, Tehran. He has done PhD, MSc Chemistry, BSc Chemistry from Ramakrishna Mission Vivekanand College, University of Madras, and secured second rank and first class in BSc and first rank and first class in MSc. He has participated in national level internship program, cleared state level proficiency test, qualified state level eligibility test conducted by the government of Tamil Nadu. He has been honored with several awards and facilitations. He has received best student award from Ramakrishna Mission Vivekanand College, received Quality Award at National Tepe University of Technology in 2018, as well as in 2019. He has won Best Oral Presentation in Polymer International Conference, won the Award of Excellence in Research for Outstanding Research Performance, won 
Satevan's prestigious research scholarship award from CTCI Foundation. He has accredited 17 publications of national and international repute to his name, along with one book chapter. He has also attended various seminars, workshops, and conferences. He has attended ACS Publishing Tip Seminar held at National Tsinghua University and also participated in Indo-US International Virtual Workshop entitled India Mission for Green Hydrogen and Go Electric. He has even participated in Elsevier Knowledge Hub Publication Ethics and Research Integrity in Science and Fourth Residential Chemistry Research Drive Program. Truly an enriched profile, sir. We are honored to welcome you on the board today, sir, here with us. Today, sir will enlighten us on the topic, Sustainable Approaches for Smart Applications. We welcome you, sir. So may I start my presentation now? Or yes. you want to introduce the next speaker too? Uh, you can start your presentation, sir. Okay, okay, thank you. Thanks for your wonderful introduction. I want to thank uh, both of you, uh, Navneet Kormam and uh, Dilpreet Prithrao for your introduction. And I welcome all uh, the participants uh, who are enthusiastic in learning the topic uh, about sustainability. So yeah, let's directly go into the topic. Uh, I'll present the screen. Well, mm, yes, okay, yeah. Oh, sorry, I, I'd like to, yeah, okay, now it's fine. Okay, yeah. Okay, and today's topic is, our topic is about uh, sustainable approaches for the smart application. And uh, myself, Dr. Loganathan Viramuthu, uh, from National Taipei University of Technology, Taiwan. And uh, yeah, uh, many of us uh, don't know about Taiwan. Uh, everyone, uh, if we say Taiwan, everyone just think about uh, uh, China. It's not China, it's the uh, Republic of China. It's a separate country. And this is the, oh, sorry, I'll use my pointer here. Okay, ah, yeah. Here you can see this is uh, resembles like sweet potato. The shape looks like that. And uh, the topmost region is the Taipei, which is the capital of Taiwan. And uh, this is the tallest building in Taiwan, uh, which is having 101 floors. And uh, this is my university, National Taipei University of Technology, shortly termed as uh, Taipei Tech. And uh, yeah, let's directly get into the topic. I want to introduce about sustainability and why I want to introduce suddenly about COVID-19 because everyone know that uh, COVID-19 have a lot of impact in our personal life as well as uh, societal life. So yeah, it reduces the pollution to some extent, but uh, it's not really. It, uh, we reduce the fossil fuel consumption, but uh, apart from that, plastic pollution uh, is... <laughs> quite terrible because uh, if you look into the statistics, they are showing the, yeah, before 2019, how the, yeah, the range, how the trend is going on. And uh, after 2019, due to COVID issues uh, for the personal protective equipments, we are using a lot of plastic based, uh, yeah. For example, if you take into your mask that is made of uh, PP or PS, uh, like polymers, which is synthetic. So we are, ex expecting the natural materials to be incorporated in that kind of uh, personal protective equipment. But in reality, it's not. Very few percentage uh, they have revolutionized. But uh, even today, we can see many people, they are using masks based on uh, yeah, PP and PS. It's quite, uh, yeah, it's not easy to control this kind of uh, pollution. So that is different. Apart from the fossil fuel consumption during the quarantine period, everyone want to stay inside the home and uh, they have their work to do in, in their home itself. And many of their people, they lose their job or something. They, they have economic crisis also in terms of, uh, yeah, national level. And uh, if you want to look upon uh, plastics and uh, I want to say about sustainability, so I will focus on healthcare because uh, most of the healthcare devices or sensory devices we are looking into that is made of uh, 
some commercial polymers, plastic or synthetic uh, plastics. So yeah, now I want to show what is the importance of health cares and uh, how many people are investing on it, uh, how the yeah research grants are fun funded to those kind of health care artificial intelligence. And uh, why we want artificial intelligence? Because uh, we have to control our yeah motions for example if you want to check something you want to track something then you want this kind of uh, cloud computers or artificial intelligence internet of things and you want some sensors that can be incorporated into our day-to-day -day -to -day system so that uh, we can easily yeah track our performances right so you can see uh, where the machine learning is useful so it has many applications not only in the education because everyone uh, we <laughs> the change uh the change in trend is uh, everyone try to attend the classes uh, by yeah by online platform but it's uh not only that there are many things apart from that uh for the health care also there are many things happening so i'll highlight those things uh, in the upcoming slides here we can see how they use uh wearable gas sensors in this case uh, you can see there are many wearable devices uh, for example if you check they made in the different form like uh, patchable devices or e-textile electronic textiles and yarns and this is mask patches wristband tattoo like that and even the ring they can make uh, that is going to sense your performance or it, it, it is for example if you want to track environmental toxins how you can track them by using this kind of wearable sensors so it's easy to integrate into your body so you can easily wear those things or you can patch them and uh, you can other them into your body and you can keep working you won't feel any discomforts but in real time uh, what we do in the past we just rely on some uh, complicated instruments to make the readout and we want to know the status or we have to track them we cannot track them like every one minute but now due to the technological developments and uh, yeah most of the devices are going to be integrated with the internet of things so that you can track every seconds so it's quite good and how we can fabricate this kind of wearable sensors first of all we should know what is called substrates here and electrodes and sensing materials if you look into the substrates uh, mostly uh, we use some polymer substrates because why we want polymer we know that polymers are flexible and they just they are cheap if you are going to make it like uh, productive products then you want to make a large scale investment so you need some cheap materials and which can be sustainable for example in our case what we usually use for our uh, you can uh, check a lot of pet bottles available so how to recycle those kind of uh, pet bottles and how to transform them into a sustainable products so it is quite interesting and uh, it's challenging too and textiles are usually what we use in the past uh, we just rely on some cotton based or animal based like wool those kind of things we use are uh, from the silk uh, silk wheel extract uh, silk right silk warm from that so there are many natural sources apart from that now many people have revolutionized and they want to create some products based on your wearable comforts for example if you want to check uh, for example you want to use them as your textile and it should have some multifunction not only to protect your skin it should have some functions for example in this case i'm going to highlight the sensory applications and what can for for the devices we need the major thing one is substrate the other one is electrodes how you can fabricate the electrode in the real time we know that uh, electrodes what kind of materials we choose because we need some conductive material usually for our house wirings we always use cheaper one called what is that copper right so now uh, for the small uh, like mini uh, mini applications it's okay to use some noble metals also like gold platinum or silver because the consumption is very less and uh, it can be more stable and even copper is okay to use I, I don't say it's bad material it's good but if we compare to gold or silver the conductivity is more better than copper so many people if they want to have some sensitive devices we will rely on this kind of noble metals or in the uh, recent years many of them they focus on other materials not like metals metal based they also focus on graphene and some other transition metals uh, like yeah some other 2d materials also they prepare to form some electrodes so sensing uh, because uh, we know that there are many different sensing mechanisms involved in sensing different analytes so in this case i, I introduced in the upcoming slides you can look into 
And uh, there are many different fabrication methods, for example, solution-based method and the gas scarce-based method in that uh, we'll use different techniques. These are all the techniques they use to fabricate the devices. So yeah, now uh, I feel uh, here you can see uh, this is the review article. Uh, I feel if you are interested, you can go through this. Uh, there's a link. And uh, yeah, now I want to show there are different platforms, for example, flexible polymers, what's their advantage and disadvantage and silicon polymers, uh, which is biocompatible. So you can easily put into your body and you can use some implantable devices as well. In this case, uh, the textiles, uh, we know there are many different sources, so we can do the textile-based sensors and paper-based sensor. You can easily, yeah, use them and throw them. It will decompose by itself. So it's quite good to use this kind of uh, sustainable materials. So, yeah. So here I want to say that, uh, yeah, these are all the materials they are using. Apart from that, we need some engineering in the structures to make some durable and uh, wearable devices that can sustain the bodily strains or stress. So yeah, they use different engineering strategies to engineer the morphology or the structure, geometrical structures. So it's quite important to balance all this to get one device, wearable device. So now uh, I want to show three different kind of uh, gas sensors they usually use. Uh, they, they use this kind of chemi-resistive sensors, transistor-based sensors, or electrochemical sensors. And what is their advantage and disadvantages are given here? Yeah. And now I'd like to switch into yeah mass fabrication. Usually we know that uh, if you dis yeah disassemble your mass, then you'll see there are many layers inside, not only one or two. And uh, usually the topmost layer, which is exposed to the environment, will be like hydrophobic because you need to prevent some water droplets or if you're going to sneeze, the other people who's nearby you, they'll get transmitted easily. If it is hydrophobic, it will be stopped in the beginning itself. So we need some hydrophobic materials on your topmost layer. And the middle layer should be something which is having very good filtration efficiency because we know that uh, the topmost layer we use uh, generally, I'm saying it's polypropylene and which is milk loan fibers, which is in little bigger diameters. For example, it will be like in micrometer range, but for your, I mean, for your middle layer, you need some more efficient layers. So in that cases, we have to prepare very fine nanofibers or yeah, which is having very good aspect ratio so that it can filter better. Then the final layer, which is going to contact with your skin, should be hydrophilic because you need the moisture management because if you're going to sweat, then it has to be driven out from your body or else you'll feel discomfort, right? So for this mask, there are many things which is going on and people focusing on different aspects for biodegradability and uh, some natural based sources or natural antibacterial uh, essential oils they use to prevent the uh, bacterial growth or something. So there are many things going on. And uh, these are all the filtration efficiency in our real time. We use N95 or KN95 or yeah, like this. There are different uh, type of face masks and their filtration efficiency is more than 94 usually. So you can see it's like 94, more than 95 percentage. That means it can filter, yeah, almost all the particles only. Uh, uh, they are just uh, saying that it's more than 95, but 5% it's going to enter your, yeah you are going to inhale those things. So it's better to get even more better characteristics. So now people also working on to enhance both the filtration efficiency and also want to maintain the breathability. If you increase your thickness of your membrane, then you cannot breathe proper. So you want something which is having thinner one and which is having very good air permeability, you can easily breathe. But in the meanwhile, it should also have better filtration efficiency. So that's quite a good challenge for all the researchers. So people focusing on those things and they are coming up with different ideas and innovations. And you can see there are different standards available here in the chat. Uh, you can see in the chat, uh, you can see there are different start, uh, like ASTM methods, ISO method, EN methods. There are, yeah, different countries, they impose different standards and uh, here you can see them. And uh, here, uh, based on the nanotechnology, they have uh, devised uh, many different uh, personal protective equipments. For example, you can say for the detection, they have uh, yeah PCR test and vaccine. They have to design based on the yeah this kind of technologies, right? So yeah, for decontamination or if you want to prepare mask, you need some nanotechnology there. 
So it's quite important. Uh, we need some technology to tackle our present situation. So here, this is another article. Uh, in this, they are saying uh, there are different kind of uh, energy producing uh, microelectronics and uh, different uh, photo photonics and as well as some wireless transmitters uh, that will be helpful for your telecommunications. Yeah, so there are many advantages going on, but the problem is their rigidity because most of the devices in the past, we always rely on some rigid materials. It's not quite good and you cannot impregnate into your wearable devices. So we need to balance both. First of all, I should say that uh, the major thing is we have to maintain the flexibility or stretchability to, yeah. And then other thing is you want to maintain your cost. Then other thing is your sustainability, yeah. Now, in this case, you can see, uh, yeah, this is uh, two different uh, scenario. You can see this is e-skin devices. They are patching into directly into the skin. So your skin cells should be, yeah, our whatever the devices we are going to fabricate, it should be friendly, bio-friendly to our skin, skin cells. So this is quite important when you are going to do the device. So better to choose some sustainable, natural-based resources to fabricate this kind of e-skin devices. And in terms of textiles, e-textiles, you can see, uh, yeah, in recent years, many people working on smart textiles and we also do. So in this case, uh, there are many challenges, not only for body strains and uh, washability. It's quite important and flexibility, durability, it should be durable. After one wash, two wash, if it's getting no performance means no use of uh, buying that kind of smart textile. So there are many challenges going on. And uh, here, we can see there are many physical signals and thermal signals we have to monitor in order to monitor health, right? So if we can do this kind of uh, devices, wearable devices, and we can impregnate with the wireless communication, uh, wireless devices, then with the help of uh, telecommunication, for example, 5G or 6G, then we can always transmit all the data very fast so that you can easily track that can be processed in the cloud computers, then it will be transformed to your remote medical service. For example, you are, yeah, you want to track and your yeah, medical practitioner is not in the city. So he, he can easily connect to you by this kind of yeah systems. And uh, now I want to highlight uh, what is the importance of using uh, wearable devices and what is the market trend. Here you can see there are, yeah, some recent statistics. Uh, we can see how the trend is going on uh, in the wearable electronics and electro spinning. I'll show you what is called electro spinning. And uh, yeah, here we can see there are different type of uh, healthcare systems yeah, uh, based on textile, tattoo, sweat-based, tear-based, smart bandages. And this, this uh, table is highlighting the real-time devices, which is already available in the market. So you can see Apple Watch, Fitbit, and uh, there are many other products available, their cost and their performance, how, how durable it is, uh, that kind of things is discussed. Here also you can see some ECG-based devices or to monitor the diabetes, those kind of things already available in the market. And uh, now I want to highlight there are different conductive polymer electrodes because uh, we know that uh, our wearable electrode should be durable and it should also balance the conductivity. So mechanical strength and conductivity is quite important for wearable electrodes. So there are different uh, polymer based uh, conductive uh, materials. Here you can see uh, polyaniline, polypropylene, P.PSS, polyacetylene. So yeah, they make uh, many conjugated polymers like this. So that will, help, that will be helpful for balancing your conductivity and flexibility. So for that, uh, this is material aspect, right? So this is for your fabrication aspect. If you want to fabricate that kind of uh, very durable devices, you want to manage your thickness and other things. Uh, for example, you have to engineer your structures in micro and nano. So you have to adapt some techniques, which is very easy to use and which should be scalable. You, If you want to scale your devices, if you want to make 10,000 pieces, how you can do. So scalability is quite important. So we have to rely on those things. So here, uh, this is some example for uh, some functional materials. Uh, this is perovskite. Uh, in recent years, everyone might know about this one. And uh, perovskites have many different applications and uh, why it is so. If you are interested, you can go through some uh, yeah, perovskite literatures. 
And uh, this is another material called the MXing. In recent years, uh, people also focusing on this because it has a very good uh, structural aspect as well as uh, some conductive aspects. So they use this kind of uh, uh, system for making electrodes and uh, for EMI shielding, electromagnetic interference shielding, and sensing energy storage all things. And uh, here, uh, this is the different uh, methodology to prepare some graphene quantum dots because everyone might have aware of uh, graphene and uh, what is called graphene. And uh, because we know that uh, it's a natural material, uh, you can easily derive from all the carbon sources. Uh, so we can easily get one sheet called uh, graphene. And if you are going to get even more smaller, then it is called graphene quantum dots, which is having quantum confinement effects so that uh, your optical performance and other performance will be better than other uh, 2D or 3D materials. So yeah, this is different strategies they are using to prepare for arranging from solvothermal, hydrothermal, microwave, and ultrasonication, microplasma, laser-based. So there are different methodology to prepare graphene quantum dots. And this is for preparing some fiber-based devices. So for that, we have to rely on this kind of techniques to prepare uh, fibers, 1D fibers, one-dimensional fibers. So yeah, this is the basic setup. Uh, usually we'll put some polymers here and using the control rate uh, with the pump, uh, we'll pump them and uh, use some high voltage sources. Then we can easily collect them as nanofibers or microfibers. If you want to tune, then you can, because we are preparing some solutions, right? We have to use some solvent. So if we adjust the solvent or concentration or collection uh, methodology, then we can harvest uh, different kind of morphologies like smooth, porous, hollow sheet, yeah, so there are different ways to prepare different morphologies and uh, different structures. So yeah, if you're interested, you can look into this. And uh, this is another article. They are showing uh, different ways to prepare electrospun nanofibers. And this is the recent article we published. It's open access, anyone can have a look on it. And this is another paper we recently published. And in this, we have uh, given different uh, sensing applications using the nanofiber structure, 1D nanofiber structure, because uh, you can see this is electrospin setup uh, and how they yeah, incorporate this kind of uh, sensing and light, how they can sense uh, some toxic gas or pH, uh, humidity, all these things can be done. And uh, electrospinning, this is the methodology we rely on. And uh, yeah, wearable health monitors, there are different kind of sensing I said. Uh, here we will start up with the PSO resistive and I'll gradually go into one by one. And uh, yeah, here, uh, this is, uh, just uh, structural aspects and uh, what kind of materials they use and uh, what are all the trends growing on uh, in the wearable electronics field. And here, uh, now I want to show you the difference because I said some resistive materials, PSO resistive. PSO means you are going to apply some stress or strain on it, then you are going to, yeah, for example, in this case, you just take this one, okay? You have some thread, conventional thread, which is stretchable, or you just consider this as your elastic rubber band, okay? And you're going to coat some conductive material and you're going to stretch to different extent. What will happen? You'll lose your layers here. It will disrupt right after a certain point if you're going to stretch for a longer time. Or for example, you can extend the stretchability from 10, 50 to 80. What will happen? Your conductive networks will break so that your conductivity will, conductivity will drop. So with the help of tracking this kind of uh, resistance or conductivity, then we can easily track. This is called a PSO resistive sensor. And uh, not only one type of conductive material, they also use some hybrid materials like uh, 2D, 1D material or 0D materials to form this kind of junctions. You can see the electrons can flow through easily if you form this kind of uh, hybrid structures. Upon straining, upon stretching, you can see how the, yeah, the conduction path is getting broken and how it's uh, upon releasing your stretch, then it will come and establish your network again. So it can be durable. So it can work sustainably, right? So yeah, here, this is an article they are showing depending on your body uh, parts because every body parts have their limitations. They cannot stress more, uh, we cannot strain more. For example, if you have your elbow, shoulder, face muscles, every, every part have their certain limitations. So we cannot, yeah, so with this kind of uh, strain sensors or pressure sensors, we can sense the performance. Or if you want to track your body, body motions, or if you want to track the health conditions, you can do with this kind of sensory devices. And uh, here you can see, this is one simple example. Here I'm going to highlight the two different systems. 
One is uh, only RGO, reduced graphene oxide. Here, the patterns are lissajous. It's not uh, very straight. But if we use this kind of a blended system, RGO plus silver nanowires, then the conduction path is good because we know that it's going to create uh, an additional network. So the conduction path will be easy. You don't want to travel like this. It's very easy to transfer your electrons from this place to this place, top to bottom. So yeah, in this case, we can also improve our performance. So we need some hybrid system. That's why people uh, rely on some composite materials to do this kind of sensory applications. In terms of uh, pressure sensing, you can see the deformation. This one is small deformation. It will be like this. It is a poor structure. You can see it's like a sponge. If you're going to apply some pressure, then it will deform, deform, deform like this. Upon deformation, you will be establishing the electron tunneling effects here. Then you will be able to get some good conductivity so that you can track your performance. In this case, you can see uh, they are using three different uh, structures of uh, they'll prepare some mold. So yeah, usually they'll use some photolithography or vacuum-based techniques, which is not easy to do. And you have to, that is energy intensive. You have to apply many energy using some fossil fuels because many of the energy sources are coming from fossil fuels. So it's not sustainable way to do. So if we prepare this kind of mold and you can just uh, put them and release them so you can easily fabricate the device. So this is a simple way to, yeah. <laughs> establish the sustainability in your research. And uh, here they are comparing three different structures and they are studying the stress, uh, stress patterns in the three different structures and they are optimizing the conditions to get the better sensitivity. Yeah, so before stretching, uh, before applying the pr uh, pressure, it was like this. And if you are going to apply under pressure, then you can see the tunneling and the electron flow will be like this. So you can easily track your performance by studying the current ratio like this, delta I by I naught. And uh, this is another paper. Uh, in this, I'm going to discuss about uh, the importance of uh, resistive sensors in monitoring your heartbeats like this. Because in this case, they are preparing some soft materials using some conventional polymer, uh, eco-friendly polymer, water-soluble polymer. So you don't want to execute with some toxic solvents. In this, water is okay to process, so it's quite good for the environment and sustainability. And in this case, uh, they are controlling the yeah uh, cross-link intensity so that, uh, and uh, in this, they are using two different material, one PVA and the other one is uh, phytic acid, which is natural source, so which is sustainable. So this kind of soft materials, they process and they have uh, uh, double networks. One is ionic bond and hydrogen bond. So they can be more durable and robust. So which is promoting the sustainability and uh, this is another type of sensor. The previous two, three works I'm explaining about resistive sensor, and this one is about capacitive sensors. And uh, in this case, you can see this is the active material we are going to use. In this case, uh, you just consider this as your fiber, normal like your textile, 1D fibers, and upon pressure, what will happen? The distance will change between these two electrodes. One is positive and negative electrode, a cathode or anode. Okay, now you are going to apply the pressure, then you will be getting the different distance so that the dielectric constant, because we know that capacitance is uh, composed of uh, some formula. I'll introduce you in the upcoming slides and uh, how they can prepare this kind of porous structure sustainably, because usually they will use some uh, very uh, tedious process to do this kind of porous structures, but very easily we can do by using some salt, sugar, along with some yeah carbohydrates, you just do them, then you'll be ending up with some porous structures like this. So it's quite good, uh, yeah. So we can process the, yeah. We can do some sustainable process in creating this kind of sensory application. So yeah, in this case, you can see uh, they are comparing the flat structures with the 1D structures. 1D structure is prepared by a cross spinning method. Uh, you can see this is like a fiber and then the, they use uh, gold silver nanowires. Uh, yeah, gold is your electrode and silver nanowires they put on the top. When they are going to apply the pressure, what will happen? Your distance will change. So you can see the delta C effects with the yeah pressure. So yeah, with this kind of uh, random structures, uh, you can see this is not very aligned. It's very random. And uh, upon pressure, you will be getting uh, capacitive yeah, responses like this. So you can sense your pressure like this. They are comparing two different structures. One is TPU and CF and silver and TPU.
And uh, in this case, they are ma maintaining the air gaps between, uh, yeah, they are trying to adjust the distances between four different structures, the gap, you can see one mm, two mm, three mm, four mm, like that. They optimize the pillar height, all these things, and then they are calculating the capacitive field using some simulation study, and they also study the stress in the device. So that, yeah, if you are going to uh, work and you are going to sense this kind of things, it's possible to do by using this kind of, yeah, the elastic layered uh, air channel facilitated structures. So it is possible to do with the capacitive sensing. And this is for durable, uh, sustainable electrode materials. You can see because uh, usually we use some commercial gel electrodes to sense, but that kind of gel electrodes is not going to be having better contact with your skin because skin is having some rough structure. So it has to be othered. So we need some tri-block copolymers. Here we can see uh, they are using some natural material here. Uh, with some acrylic acid and MEA with some DMA, okay? Yeah, in this case, uh, it's uh, like, uh, because we know that uh, dopamine is, uh, which is uh, having uh, polydopamine having very good uh, adhesion strength. So if we can fabricate this kind of, because A is going to give the conductivity and MEA is going to give the stability. So all these three futures is going to be incorporated into one system so that your sensing can be a sustainable one. So it can last for a long time. It won't easily come out of your skin. So yeah, the sensing can be made sustainable by using this kind of strategies. And this is another paper we recently published uh, based on conducting polymer composites and nanofiber-based strain and pressure sensor. If you want to read in more detail, uh, you can just look into this. This is open access, anyone can access. And now I want to switch into the material part because last uh, few slides I'm explaining about sustainability in the patterning device device patterns or fabrication methodology or solvents, how they are transferring from one phase to other phase, right? Now I want to focus on the materials as well because uh, we know that uh, many of the wood materials, we always prepare furnitures. We don't do some electronics. So now we have to do some electronics because uh, it is possible to process them as a transparent one. Uh, here you can see the normal one, uh, the normal wood looks like this. And after delignification and uh, compression, we'll be ending up like this. And we can also control the transparency and flame retardancy by using our nanotechnology. In this case, uh, you can see there are different ways they are doing and different applications they can do. Uh, for example, they are using it in the LEDs and uh, flame retardancy and then they also use it for substrates like this. Uh, they can control and they can fill some polymers to make them transparent like this. So yeah, it is possible to do. And uh, recycling is more important in terms of research because uh, we know that uh, commercial batteries are made of some lithium material. So yeah, lithium, we know the cost is too high and it's uh, not much abundant in the environment. So we need to make them, we need to reuse the materials. We need to process them and recycle them. So it's quite important. And in this article, they are showing how to recycle this kind of uh, lithium-based electrodes and uh, how to reuse them and how to achieve the sustainable yeah, devices like this. And this is another paper. In this, you can see they are using some commercial uh, yeah, pet bottles. They have some labels, right? So they are going to reuse this. They are going to recycle them and form some super capacitors using this kind of uh, substrates. And here we can see they are using some perovskite-based material to improve the capacitance of your electrodes. So I'll introduce you about perovskites. And uh, yeah, if we have any chance in the upcoming days, we'll discuss about what is called perovskites and how, why it is so important in the research in the few recent years. And uh, here. Here we can see they use some natural wood and then they chemically treat them and freeze dry them. Then they can end up with this kind of uh, spongy structures, poor structure. Then they are going to coat them with some reduced graphene oxides. So this case, uh, what is the importance of using wood-based material? Because usually when we are going to use some elastic polymers, elastomers, which cannot retain their performance under sub-zero uh, degrees. So if we can do this kind of uh, sustainable natural wood-based materials, and uh, because we know that reduced graphene oxide also derived from natural source. So it can be working under very big range. It, it doesn't have any limitations. So 
it can be working under harsh conditions. So it's good for the real-time applications. And in this case, uh, yeah, you can see how they can control the polar structures yeah, by using some process and uh, they are controlling the crystallinity as well so that they can harvest better energy for the self-powered devices because uh, we know that, yeah, I'll introduce you. And uh, in this case, they are showing how to recycle, how to make the waste into a resource like this. Here you are, you are able to see they use some waste papers and then they pre-treat and they freeze dry and they use some components like this to give some conductivity to it. And then they use uh, them for the super capacitor application uh, with this kind of uh, system. So yeah, it's good to do the waste to resource like this kind of applications. And uh, in this case, you can see they are using some paper based cellulose is nothing but your paper. You just consider as your paper. Uh, paper have many fibers in, in your, if you are going to zoom in and see, you'll be able to see this kind of fibers. So yeah, now we are going to functionalize them with some dopamine and then polymerize it. We'll end up with polydopamine and then we can anchor some yeah, catalyst and then we try to reduce them. Electrolysis, uh, electrolysis deposition is good for the application because uh, it's scalable and uh, it's good to do with, and you'll be ending up with some copper nanoparticles because uh, they use some uh, copper particles, copper precursors, and then they reduce by electrolysis plating, uh, electrolysis deposition, then we'll be ending up with this kind of rough structures. These kind of rough structures can promote self uh, cleaning property because we know that, uh, yeah, we use some photovoltaics in uh, desert area to harvest uh, solar energy, right? So that energy, cannot be harvested for a long time because we know that desert have many wind storms. So that will contaminate your photovoltaic panels. So how to avoid this kind of, because cleaning is not easy. If you, if you want to clean every 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it's not good. So you want this kind of self-cleaning substrate so that you'll be getting sustainable energy from your yeah, system. And uh, here we can see they also use them for electromagnetic interference shielding and uh, other one is for photothermal effects they are studying with this kind of conductive structures. And uh, what is the real time target value usually they look into? They look into for 20 values like this. And uh, this is another article. They are using some bacterial cellulose. Bacterial cellulose is, uh, yeah, which is a commercial product. It is available everywhere. Uh, if you are interested, you can just Google and see what is bacterial cellulose. They can get the cellulose material from bacteria. It's quite interesting. And then uh, they'll use some CNT dispersion to get some conductivity. And then they use some vacuum drying. If you're working in the lab, you'll be aware of those things. And then you'll be ending up with this kind of structures like here. And uh, yeah, they are showing it is very light. And uh, this kind of conductive structures are going to be very helpful. You can see they are optimizing the condition from 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, like that. They are using bacterial cellulose with CNT with the different percentages, and they are calculating their strength property, fracture strength, and their conductivity. If their conductivity is high means, we will be ending up with very good uh, EMI shielding effects. So yeah, these values are quite important uh, if you are going to use them for shielding. And uh, now I want to introduce something called self-powered wearable sensors. In this, uh, they'll use two different kind of uh, dielectric materials plus electrodes. And this is the mechanism, how it works. Yeah, uh, the charge separation is initially is like this. And if you are going to apply some stress on it, then it will try to, yeah, because the surface uh, charge potential is different for two dielectrics and then one is positive and negative. We know that uh, if you want to create some triboelectric energy generators, one should be positive and the other should be negative. So we have to choose the farther one. We should not choose here and here. We won't get better outputs. So if you want to get some high energy outputs, then you should choose like this. And then, yeah, we'll get uh, this kind of, yeah. This is the working mechanism. You can see they choose uh, atom A and atom B. One is positive and negative, how the surface potential differences are there. And upon stress, how it uh, is going to transfer your electrons and then transferring the electrons is nothing but your voltage or current. So yeah, this is the mechanism, how it works. And uh, yeah, this is the triboelectric series. And uh, based on this only, they'll choose the material and they'll try to get the energy harvested from that. And this is the piezoelectric material. Uh, in the piezoelectric material, they'll use some dielectric materials, which is having very good polarization capability. 
And upon the stress and release, uh, you'll be able to get this kind of voltage outputs like this. Okay, yeah. And then uh, the major thing is we have to control the crystallinity of our dielectric material in the middle. We'll have some active material. So how to control those kind of things will be discussed in the upcoming slides. And here, we are, this is the example for smart textiles. And in this case, we are using some stretchable matrix along with some conductive materials called, uh, we'll just use some silver nanoparticles uh, using some solution-based techniques. And then we optimize the condition by using two different uh, composite polymers. And then we try to do some yeah, applications and we can check how their surface morphology is getting changed and the, how the charge transfer characteristics and the mechanism, how it works and uh, what kind of results we can harvest. And uh, the energy output is shown here with the help of uh, red light emission. And this is another paper we recently published in this. Uh, yeah, we are using self-powered uh, sensing here. In this case, uh, we use some commercial PVDF material, which is piezoelectric polymer, along with some perovskites because uh, with CNC, because uh, we need to preserve the perovskite stability. So we need some cellulose nanocrystals to preserve them. So along with this, uh, which is going to give uh, double encapsulation to your perovskite, so your perovskite can be stable because uh, we know that uh, perovskite crystal have some piezoelectricity as well as uh, PVDF also have. So we have to control the beta phase. Uh, here we can see with the help of FTAR and XRD, how we control the beta phase using this kind of structure. This is nothing but you just imagine this as your fiber, 1D fiber. Inside you can feel there are many perovskites along with some CNC materials and those nanocrystals. And then, yeah, the major thing is we use sustainable material called cellulose nanocrystals and then use uh, we use to manage the stability of our perovskites inside the uh, fiber. So we can use this kind of materials in our textile. So it can generate the energy outputs like here. We can see we check the without perovskites and with perovskites. After using the perovskites, we are able to achieve better stability because we know that the beta phase enhancement is quite critical in getting the better outputs. So we study this kind of electrical characteristics. And then we also study the yeah, sensing application using the different uh, yeah, by hand tapping um, in mask and sleeping machine and uh, in the shoe soles we use and cloth, we do different studies and with a different frequency. And we also check the stability after 60 days. It's quite stable. So yeah, it's quite important to use some sustainable methods and uh, solution processable methods, not uh, energy intensive methods. And in this case, you can see we use some uh, electro spinning methods to form SBS. SBS is a stretchable polymer styrene butadiene styrene and this is like tri-block copolymers and we use this polymer to form uh, yeah uh, nanofibers and we reinforce them you can see here this is the SEM image and uh, yeah after doing this kind of reinforcement uh, we will end up with uh, using this kind of silver precursor solution based uh, in situ reduction we'll be getting uh, silver nanoparticles like this and we study the EDX uh, mapping so that we can see the interconnected network so which will have which will be having more higher conductivity it's nearly 5000 siemens per meter i feel i remember and uh, in this case uh, we also study the yeah um, bonding characteristics and the crystallinity characteristics of our silver nanoparticles uh, formed uh, via different methods because here we are comparing electro spinning and wet spinning wet spinning is uh, like a normal fiber, which which will not having this kind of reinforcement, small small nanofibers together. When we are going to use this kind of uh, nanofiber reinforced structures, uh, we can use them in sensing because here we can see the resistance change upon bending your fingers like this. And if you are going to, if you are having some disability, you, you cannot communicate with someone. If you are having some, yeah. So that kind of things can be done using this kind of smart gloves. So we made some demonstration and we also have some video demonstration in this article you can check. And uh, here uh, we are studying the mechanical robustness of our system. We are comparing the WCF system, which is uh, failed within 200 percentage of strain. But if we use this kind of reinforced structures, uh, which is going to give better mechanical durability as well as uh, the stability. And uh, this kind of uh, reinforced structures can be easily zoomed into your commercial fabrics like this. And uh, we also study the stability over a period of time uh, under sonication, under deep, uh, because we have to check, because we do this under 
solution processing condition. So we have to tune our deep coating time. Deep coating is nothing but uh, how we, yeah, if you want to make some coating, dye coating, you maybe might have seen how they do the dye coating onto your textiles the same way we use, uh, yeah, like that. And uh, here you can see we are comparing the wet spun structure, which is like a normal fiber here, the core part you can see. Whereas in the reinforced structure, the we can see there are many nanofiber structures in the core. And then this kind of structures are going to give a better electrical stress accumulation onto our system. So this kind of stress accumulation is quite important for our energy output. So yeah, we can see the differences among normal structure like WSNG and ESNG. We will be getting better outputs. So this is quite sustainable way to harvest the energy outputs without investing on some additional composite materials because in the previous case, we used some perovskites and we tried to encapsulate them using some natural material like CNC. But in this case, we don't want those kind of additive materials to tune our energy outputs. In this case, we can easily do by our structural morphological optimization. So it's very really interesting to do. And uh, yeah, if you are interested, you can go through my, yeah, publications in my recent years. These are all the publications. Uh, yeah, if you're interested, you can yeah go through my profile. And these are all the references I follow for this presentation. And uh, I'm available in all this platform. If you are interested, yeah, you can get connected and you can follow my progress. And uh, yeah, I want to share some scenic area in uh, Taiwan. And during the rainy season, it looks like this. And, uh, and this is some yeah, this, this place is the National Yang Shen Mountain, National uh, Yang Shen Park. Here, uh, they have a lot of restriction. You should follow these kind of things when you are going to visit. And this is some yeah traditional festival they have, and they are yeah having the celebration, and we got some clicks there. This is uh, Central Taiwan. Uh, here, they have a lot of... Uh, this place is called Sito, and they have very old uh, trees, nearly 1,000 years old trees are available. Everything is like uh, cypress trees, uh, which is having very good medicinal values too. And uh, they have tea plantation and many historical places to visit. And they have some hiking trail. If you visit Taiwan, uh, I welcome you to yeah have this kind of uh, tourist uh, attractions to see. And I want to thank my professor in this time. And I want to thank all my teammates. And this is my professor, Professor Dr. Chichinko. And I want to thank all of my master's students, PhD and postdoc students. Uh, yeah, they are very helpful in uh, getting all my results and uh, they are helpful in uh, discussing all the results we got. We have healthy relationship within our team. And uh, this is a NTUT website. If you are interested in getting the admission, you can just uh, go through the website and we have scholarships available. Yeah, anyone who is interested, please go through the websites. And uh, yeah, I want to thank all my collaborators. Uh, they are very supportive. And uh, yeah, we have always uh, debate in understanding the mechanisms and uh, what kind of uh, products we can develop or what kind of mechanism is going to work. So yeah, we have always uh, queries and uh, we find some solutions for it. I hope uh, we'll retain our yeah, relationships better in the upcoming days too. And uh, yeah, I want to thank the organizers. Um, yeah, and uh, I want to thank uh, ICERT for inviting me as a resource person. Uh, I believe uh, all the participants are interested in listening to my lecture. I feel, uh, yeah, they'll have some queries. Uh, I'm able to yeah, share my knowledge, what I have. Yeah, everyone is not the expert. We are just learning every day. So uh, I expect everyone to yeah share their thoughts and views about my results or if they have any other suggestions or if they have any idea they can yeah discuss for a while thank you thank you one and all thanks okay thank you so much sir Taiwan is really a very beautiful place we can see through the pictures and what a beautiful <laughs> presentation it was sir it was truly very knowledgeable enriching and insightful a complete new stream of knowledge. The things we were not aware of, you gave us a knowledge about them. The things you talked about, the self-powered wearable sensors, sustainable materials, skin-friendly sensors, nanofiber structures. These were really completely new terms for us. And these terms really tell us that science can truly pave a way for the sustainable development. 
and the way you presented sir it was really mesmerizing thank you so much for this knowledge now i would uh, like to invite you. dr navneet ma'am for thanking our resource person and starting the discussion for the same navneet ma'am greetings dr loganathan what a great researcher you are and what an eye opening session was this science is no, a beautiful I'm, gift to I'm humanity i'm not a good person everyone is <laughs> i feel yeah i'm just a learner i'm learning learning everyone no, is learning i'm telling you you have, <laughs> you have you know opened so many eyes today and it's you have really made it clear that science is a beautiful gift to humanity we should not distort it sustainable yeah. development is the pathway to the future we want for all and you've given multiple examples for that it offers a framework to generate economic growth achieve social justice exercise environmental stewardship and strengthen governance so this is really you have made it uh, i should say you have explained it so beautifully your articulation was amazingly uh, mind blowing what a deep uh, knowledge of subject you have and uh, the way you have taken the topic you know in detail great statistic i must your team kudos to your team the statistic work was really wonderful and the examples you gave i think every educational institution every department every corporate world need this kind of thing thank you so much what a great session and i think everybody wants to connect with you because this is need of our this is something we all are looking for so i'll i'm thankful to you for being on the platform and being the part of icrt and as what dilpreet has told you have really taken at the last tewan and we all wish to move over there maybe one of our offline uh, workshop conference or seminar uh, will request icrt that it should be in tewan also and we love to okay. visit your institute also thank you thank you to your whole team god bless you thank you thank you ma'am uh, yeah i feel yeah because uh, this kind of field uh, everyone is uh, yeah uh, getting to know in recent years and uh, it's quite interesting it's not like already basic science everyone already have thought this is quite new so everyone will be interesting to listen and i feel uh, we talk about sustainable development but the you know small small gifts you have given to us today they are really very very important for us and i think this ppt people are going to watch again and again because it was you have given it in a brief but really every part need to be understand deeply thoroughly then only we'll be able to take this path to some other level wonderful really great articulation thank you so much yes. okay. adilpreet we are taking questions now only or afterwards uh, ma'am we can summarize both the speakers together at the yeah, end yeah yeah you please continue with the next speaker okay. thank you dr loganathan and please be with us you, because i feel people really wants to ask you so many things <laughs> okay okay thank you ma'am yeah. i'll be here okay thank you so i am going to introduce our second guest of honor and keynote speaker today that is ms pratishta gupta ms pratishta gupta is an educator cbsc and ncert resource person author teacher trainer and environmentalist she holds around 20 years of experience in teaching science and environment studies associated with cbsc and ncert she has conducted several workshops and training sessions nationwide for teachers as well as students for experiential learning in science nep 2020 secondary school assessment and environment education in practice currently she is serving as hod at itl public school dwarka new delhi she has been awarded with state teachers award recently by government of ncat delhi we welcome you ma'am today on the board with us today ma'am will enlighten us on the topic sustainable development goals and sustainable futures we welcome you ma'am thank you so much uh, dilpreet kaur ma'am i hope i am audible yes ma'am you are and visible <laughs> to everyone yes. who has joined this uh, lovely program first of all many many thanks uh, for inviting me for including me in this uh, wonderful program 
And I feel really honored to be sharing the stage with such lovely academicians, such knowledgeable people. Somewhere I feel my knowledge is too limited in front of all of you. And especially Dr. Loganathan, sir, I am really so impressed with your presentation and I'm surely going to ask a few students of mine to, I have taken screenshots actually, and I will definitely uh, ask them to look into your research and uh, what a remarkable work you are doing, sir. And uh, I will introduce myself. My name is Pratishtha and I am basically working with school students and uh, I teach science, biology, as well as chemistry. And I'm a tree teacher trainer with CBSC as well as NCRT. And uh, my main work is uh, to, uh, in the field of education. However, I am a nature enthusiast at heart and an environmentalist. And since past few years, I'm associated with Delhi government also, and we are uh, running campaigns towards sustainable uh, living and uh, how to conserve water and uh, basically adopting a zero waste lifestyle. So I believe many students must have joined uh, this session all uh, from various parts of the world. So my presentation is very simple, very uh, relatable. And because all of us are from the field of science, first of all, I should congratulate all of you also for the UN um, World Science Day for Peace and Development. It is a great day for all the people who are associated with science. And uh, as uh, uh, Dilpreet Ma'am was mentioning in her uh, address, that World Science Day also underlines the importance and relevance of science in our daily lives. So my presentation will take you to your kitchen, to your um, household, and uh, in our day-to-day -day activities, what all we can do to become more and more sustainable and how uh, we can bring about small little changes in our lifestyles and make our earth better. So no presentation or with, uh, with uh, a lot of research or anything, uh, because uh, I, as I told you, I'm not a research scholar. I am an educationist, but I am an environmentalist at heart. So um, with your permission, uh, Ma'am uh, Navneet, I'll share my screen. Please, Ma'am, we are waiting yes. to hear you. Uh, yes, I hope my presentation is visible. Is it? Yes, Ma'am, it is. Okay, yes, Ma'am. Okay, good. thank you so much. I'll just bring it. So, on the uh, in uh, for on the World Science Day. Our present, my presentation on sustainable development goals and sustainable futures. Now, uh, I believe most of all, uh, most of us must be aware, but there might be some students who might be not very, uh, very clear about the idea of sustainability. Uh, so, I would just like to draw your attention towards these little terms which we often use and many a times we use these terms in a very uh, generic way so let us try and understand what sustainability is sustainability actually means meeting the needs of the present generation whatever we are having right now and without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs like the present is taken care and as well as the future, like we say, no, we have not inherited the earth, we have borrowed it from our children. So if we uh, talk about the uh, World Commission on Environment and Development in the uh, in our common future, they stated sustainability is ensuring that the planet and all the resources can continue to provide a home for humans, animals and plants that live here. So it is our job because humans are considered as the most intelligent of all species. And so it is our job to take care of this planet so that the future generations of people, animal, as well as plants, they can live and thrive on earth. So thrive 
grow and develop well, right? So uh, these sustainable development goals, like I said, most of us might, uh, must be aware, but then some for some students, I feel. Now, SDGs are a common calling upon which 193 countries all over the world, they came together in uh, 2015 and they gave a timeline till 2020 that is also known as 2030 agenda and they have given a blueprint how to achieve a better and a more sustainable future for all and in this agenda 2030 they have laid down 17 common goals irrespective of the countries from where we have joined uh, these 17 goals are common for all of us to achieve a better life, a better future, to reduce inequality, to bring about positive reformation towards climate change, reducing environmental degradation, peace and justice. And if I believe all the countries come together and they work toward, towards it, uh, so SDGs, can definitely be attained by 2030. If not 2030, then maybe 10 years later, but then definitely it is possible. It is not something which is impossible. But why we are using this term, why sustainable so many times? What is the need of being sustainable? Now, we have recently experienced a pandemic, rather we have we have not crossed the pandemic totally. We are still in uh, within the pandemic. We see what kind of problems have come up because of pandemic. And otherwise also, there are so many problems associated with environment. If we talk about climate change, if we talk about loss of biodiversity, if you talk about environmental degradation, depletion of resources, uh, water table going down at various places, desertification. These are a couple of uh, problems I have listed. Rising temperature, global warming, ozone depletion. These days, uh, the the new trend of new uh, new types of viruses coming up. So all these problems, they are common to everyone, be it rich, be it poor, uh, whether they are they have a fair skin or not, they are irrespective of any caste creed or any differences. So what we need to do, what is the solution? The solution is, to be sustainable, to be mindful, to be responsible, to be careful about what our actions are and how these actions are going to impact on the future generations. Now, we all know, this is just for the students, I have kept this slide. We all know about renewable and non-renewable resources. Many a times we grow up, but we tend to forget these little um, these little clarities which uh, are given in our junior classes, the renewable resources that can continue to replenish themselves. They can take care of themselves. If we talk about woods, if we talk about um, water, we don't need to uh, uh, we know we don't need to make any any change they they will replenish themselves on their own right similarly in the non-renewable resources basically if you see the earth system is a zero waste system earth does not produce any waste whatever is waste for one kind of uh, process that is a welcome um, that is a welcome info, input for another process. So uh, the use of non-renewable resources has basically, it is different from the regular natural processes of the earth. So non-renewable resources like the ones, fossil fuels, petrol, the ones which we are not, we cannot bring back in our own lifespan, right? Petrol, hai, diesel, hai, all these, coal, of course, all those fossil fuels which are limited. 
right? Now, if we talk about climate change, climate change is one of the most burning topic and rather a concern and an environmental concern that affects each and every one. Global warming, greenhouse gases, increasing in the levels of um, oceans and too much of burning of fossil fuels. If I am sitting in Delhi and we have got uh, every time, uh, we, every year since the past uh, uh, few years, every year during this particular period of uh, the uh, annually uh, in the month of uh, late October, November, we face this acute problem of severe air quality index. So these are the effects of the changes that are taking place in the environment. And it is leading to rising temperatures during the summers and air pollution, I mentioned, increased smog these days. You cannot move out to take the morning walk, right? Then wildfires, if you see across the world, these instances are uh, very, very common and they are increasing. If you talk about floods, droughts, if you talk about various diseases I mentioned um, in the previous slide also, then if you talk about um, pollution in all forms, whether it is soil pollution, whether it is uh, water pollution or air pollution, everything is getting affected. So what is the solution to it? Again, I will come back to the term sustainability. We need to adopt a sustainable approach so that our future is better. A future is sustainable and our future is reliable, right? So of course, adopting methods like use of renewable energies, biofuels, limiting the cutting down of trees, all these things. So we have to do that if we have to make choices. Now, these days, the Delhi government is, um, in fact, nationwide, there has been a ban of uh, upon the use of six, uh, single-use plastic items uh, from 1st of July onwards. Now, it is not available. So, we have to make informed choices. We have to be very mindful while we are using some resources or we are buying something, what kind of waste we are generating. So these are simple uh, but very, very effective methods of dealing with the problems like climate action, environmental degradation and loss of biodiversity. A common man, a common uh, household woman, or a, a school students, college students who cannot do something very drastic, but they can adopt these simple, small, little baby steps they can take. And uh, while making these uh, take making these changes in their day to day lives, they can really make a difference. When uh, I'm talking to you, the I am seeing more than 400 people. If 400 voices go to 400 more voices and then this chain continues and we take a pledge that we are not going to use the single use plastics and we are going to cut down on our carbon footprint. I am sure, I am sure it is going to really make a difference. The only thing is we need to have the will to do this. Now. We all know about solar energy, wind energy, hydropower, and biomass energy. So I will not go into details. Of course, this uh, the students any event that you are planning once you. Uh, make such choices, your uh, carbon footprint will definitely be reduced. 
Now we all, uh, I was just talking about carbon footprint only. The impact, the amount of carbon dioxide that we are producing uh, due to our actions. So how we can reduce our carbon footprint. If I'm if I talk about stu school students, college students, simple steps like taking public transport, like walking or just going by a bicycle. If it is uh, in the nearby place or pooling cars, every time we take a ticket to suppose our hometown and if our like I belong to Lucknow and it is uh, an overnight journey, but what do I do? So many times I try to take a flight. These, this, uh, these uh, flights have become so common where when it is in a manageable place and we can go by the train, we should always try to take, take a train because flights are producing a very large carbon footprint uh, rather than the train. Similarly, just carrying a reusable bag, I'll just show you uh, in the coming slides how to make a zero waste kit for yourself, especially when you are traveling, if you're carrying that um, small little kit with you, you can reduce so much of waste that you are producing. Just by carrying a small little lunch box and trying to uh, take the refillable things that we are uh, uh, taking from the market or on the go or when you are uh, maybe trekking or you are you have just gone for a ride so these little things do make a difference just unplug the devices when they are not in use adopt slow fashion about fashion also i'm going to talk in the coming slide let us not let us pledge that we will not waste food so many times we serve that much food which is not re, uh, needed and we often end up wasting it it is about being mindful while you are serving even when you don't have to pay for it try to go for a plant based diet because the meat based diet or the animal based diet is producing a larger carbon footprint it requires more water even the water footprint is more composting composting of waste which is biodegradable whatever we can do that since a couple of years i have started composting my own kitchen waste so once i was just calculating around three kgs of waste uh, is being produced in my household so now three kg of waste per day into 30 if in, in an average and into uh, otherwise into 12. It makes for 30 into 12, it makes for an year. And since I am doing it for three years, you can just multiply the amount of kgs of compost that I have created and the amount of uh, waste that I am adding to the landfills otherwise for no reason that can be reduced. We should always go try to buy local and buy seasonal stuff. Then not just simple, simple uh, steps towards sustainability, use of the correct. There are always two switches in our flush tank. One is the smaller one, one is the larger one. When you are using it only for urinating, try using smaller ones because it is giving out less water. So just seeing to it that our uh, email, the junk box, the extra mails are deleted. So many times we do not delete those mails. They are just lying. We, we, we think that it does not affect, but maintaining those emails to, for the company and for the entire this network, it takes energy. So wherever possible, try and reduce your carbon footprint. It will not cost you anything from your pocket, right? So there, uh, I was just discussing the, the same sustainable living practices at home. 
conserving energy, trying to use the water judiciously. Now, water, like people say, the next world war is going to be for water. You never know. The wa water is such, such a resource and it is so abundant otherwise, but it is the availability of free portable, uh, the uh, portable drinking water is so less. And so many countries are facing acute water shortage. So conserving water, just trying to see to it, if all of us pledge that we will not waste the water that comes out of that RO machine, the only one step, if I ask you to just take one step, one pledge to conserve water, that you will not waste that and you are going to reuse it for maybe mopping or cleaning purpose, still you will contribute a lot. Making a compost fit, I have already told you. Planting simple, small vegetables for, for your, in your own kitchen garden. If not possible, you can do some microgreens. In this way, you are dependent less on the products which you bring from the market. That is going to, again, reduce the carbon footprint that you are creating for yourself and your family. These steps may look very uh, trivial, but uh, believe you, uh, believe me that if you do these steps, these baby steps, they really make a lot of uh, difference. Try it ordering the bigger packets of groceries. Try to make homemade desserts, making ordering desserts also uh, creates a lot of foot, uh, footprint. Then cloth shopping bags, I have already told you. This is the six hours of conservation. <laughs> I believe most of you are aware. I'll just uh, quickly flip through this slide. Reducing, first of all, we need to reduce the use of resources. We need to reduce our wants and our uh, limitless cravings for more and more and more, more clothes, more of, uh, more of gadgets, more of buying things, more everything. If there is a festival, I have to buy everything new, even if I have uh, things which are very in a very good condition, right? So the first step is re reduce. The second step is reuse. We all know that we using any article, any stuff which we can, uh, which we should try uh, to use as much possible. Then if it is not in a condition that it can be reused, we can recycle it into some other form. These days, there is one more uh, term coming up, refurbish. Now, then the fourth one is recover. If there is something which is lying and which probably you are not using, which you th thought that was a waste, but you can uh, recover it and you can probably make use of it, is recover. Then redesign may maybe um, uh, maybe just changing its form and its form and trying to restructure it uh, into a, uh, some other form. Or ultimately, it is remanufacture when you break it and you try to make a fresh one, right? So this should be the last one. And if not possible, I'll add one more, rot. Rot is something which is biodegradable and which you feel that cannot be used anymore. It should be was put to the compost bin, right? So we can all be more sustainable as a society by following these six R principles of saving the environment. Now, the next slide is showing you some of the terms were used by uh, uh, Loganathan sir also. These are the recycling co codes of plastics which are given at the back of every bottle of whatever shampoos, whatever food items, ketchups, um, even our um, uh, lunch boxes in the kitchen, in the living space, so many things that you are seeing are, uh, you will, if you will turn the other side, you will see these codes. So it is very important for us, for, for common people, 
for housewives, for students to understand these codes. Now, there are seven main types of codes. And apart from that, there is acrylonitrile and polyamide. So, which type? I will not go uh, into detail of all these codes. I'll just tell you that the codes like the number six, the number six code, the one which is having, which is mainly the styrofoam plates or polystyrene, which we often use for uh, planning our parties and um, serving drinks to the guests in the party. This is the one of the worst form of plastic. And of course, it is single use when it is when it goes to the uh, to the garbage, of course, because it is non-recyclable, it is single use, it is not collected by the rag picker. So what happens? It ends up into the landfill or it ends up into the oceans where it breaks into smaller parts or we can even say microplastics and there it enters into the food chain. And human beings being the highest in all trophic levels for all the food chain, I'm sure all of you must have studied about biomagnification also, and uh, this way also. So they are the worst affected. Now, recent studies have shown that even the sea salt, even the salt which we obtain from the ocean, from the sea, that sea water, that is also having traces of microplastics. So we have to be very, very mindful what we are putting into our ocean, right? So the number one bottle, which is the soda bottle, or we say water bottles, which we are often given uh, when we, which we often buy to uh, have drinking water. This is for the single use. It was once created, of course, for the betterment, for the benefit of the society, because it was very, um, very cost effective and very, of course, e it provides a lot of ease and uh, comfort to the uh, um, to the human beings. But over the period of time, because of the excessive use, because of this excessive use of uh, these uh, single use plastic items, what has happened? The uh, the disposal, the waste, is now a problem in most of the societies and in fact in developed countries also you will see that the plastic waste uh, disposal has become a real problem so we have to be very mindful while we are throwing our plastic waste the second one hdpe which is reusable which is uh, which is regarded as the good quality but the other, otherwise, when we talk about PVC or LDP, LDP is number four, which is basically the bags, the thin plastic bags, which we often get from for groceries and shopping bags. They, they are really uh, problematic because they cannot be collected and recycled to, in a very efficient way because so many segregation is involved. That requires a lot of energy, a lot of um, cost. And because these are low cost material, so it ends up going into the landfill. It is not collected, right? So we need to be very mindful about buying plastic uh, items, what we, we should buy, what we should not and how we should dispose it. This is very important that we teach our children, our youngsters, our housewives, everyone to uh, ensure that they uh, see to it that the correct disposal of plastic is done. Now, what all we can do at home? Simple little, um, little activities like I was talking to you about composting. But before composting, it is very important that segregation of waste is done in the correct way. What has to go into the blue bin, which is recyclable one, what has to go in the green bin, which has to go into the compost pit, and what has to go into the red bin, which is basically the sanitary or the um, uh, biomedical waste maybe. 
at the domestic level, we are just uh, segregating into three parts. Right? So uh, I have already told you about uh, growing your own vegetables, growing your own food as much as you can. Of course, it is not possible in urban setup, in flats with limited space, but then we can always grow micro greens, small little uh, planters within our house only, which is going to, of course, give us a fresh feel, fresh vibes of nature. And um, some little, uh, you will definitely, um, appreciate some little coriander, some little fenugreek leaves, fresh if you get at home. So what all we can do in school and colleges, of course, school and colleges carrying a steel water bottle and uh, use total complete ban on the use of uh, plastic in any form whether it is stuff, uh, lunch boxes, water bottles, uh, plastic covers, file covers, use of plastic stationery these days, eco-friendly stationery is also available. All these little steps we can take and of course use of public transport, school transport as much as possible and otherwise the students should be encouraged to use uh, their bikes, the uh, the bicycles or e-vehicles uh, e at, at all they have, donating books, creating book clubs, uh, creating um, uniform uh, donation centers. You can just uh, pool in your resources, which is ultimately going to help everyone when it comes to environment. Now, this is a, a picture showing the zero waste kitchen. Uh, what all we can do to reduce the waste from the kitchen, the, the napkins, that the tissue that we are using, the finer the tissue, the better the quality, the better the absorbency, the, it, that means more and more water has been used for creating that. So it is important that when it is unavoidable, tapto we should use, but then otherwise we can always uh, switch for cloth napkins, reusable shopping cloth bags, and uh, trying to use reusable lunch boxes, wraps, and so many other things, metal lunch boxes, using a hand grinder uh, for coffee, or for using um, coffee reusable filters and for using simple uh, metal infuser for tea. If you talk about, even I was reading somewhere, the tea bags, the kind of fabric that they are, uh, the kind of paper, kind of a fabric in which the tea, some traces of um, plastics. So, uh, of course, there must be in permissible limit, whatever, but then trying to avoid all these things can really help us in reducing our waste. Now, I was talking to you about zero waste kit. This is a very, uh, I have selected some pictures from the net and this simple uh, waste kit we can create and we can always carry small little lunch boxes, some metal straw a wooden or uh, wooden spoons or forks which can be um, which can be composted or else metal uh, forks and spoons which can be reused washed and then reused carrying a box always with us in a bag so wherever you want to buy something you can take in that box and you, you can enjoy with your kit I mean, wherever you find water just wash and keep it back so if we teach our uh, generations the responsible behavior towards society because science is ultimately about benefiting the society if we are not able to solve the real world problems the real world problems the challenges that we are facing so uh, then the idea of being uh, a developed country or in a very good economic state is doesn't uh, go very well, at least for me. So uh, as I was telling you that uh, 
the the world science day has, science day has to be celebrated has to be uh, imagined when the importance and relevance of science comes in daily life when we are able to connect the dots the importance of uh, these things sustainable practices in a scientific way if we teach our younger generation the uh, the importance of all these aspects in a very scientific way in a in a very non judgmental way in a very clear way they are being taught from the very beginning definitely they are going to be the change makers i was talking to you about growing your own micro greens at home so this is just one a picture now composting of course brown green gets uh, uh, converted into compost by the use of the correct microorganisms the fungi but not the bacterial actions otherwise it will spoil it so uh, this is uh, an excellent excellent way of converting your waste into wealth the black wealth the uh, smell of compost the when it is actually uh, made so it is really lovely and once our generation children they start bringing these uh, these um, lifestyle changes this uh, into their uh, day to day practices it is really going to be wonderful now eco bricks uh, is another very very interesting way and interesting and environment friendly way to basically repurpose the 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 plastics which cannot be recyclable if you talk about chocolate wrap wrappers or if you talk about um Uh, chips wrappers or uh, the candies which are so small the uh, the masala pouches or something they are so small that they cannot be picked up by the rag pickers and but they end up just filling the landfills and they are not allowing the composting to take place because they block the air supply and the microorganisms are not able to Uh, function properly when we talk about uh, the land if they are put so this is a very good way of repurposing them the idea is taking a plastic bottle and they after cleaning the plastic waste especially the ones which is having multi layered plastic which are having a lot of colors so because colors cannot be segregated so these plastics are totally non recyclable non reusable so they can be cleaned dried and they can be cut into smaller pieces and then they can be put into these bottles in a tight uh, manner and by just pushing them and keeping them sometimes you can even add some uh, some sand also to increase the density and make it heavier and it can be used in a very uh, purposeful manner if you see i have put some pictures there is a lot of um, development that is taking place people are making uh, roads out of these uh, eco bricks they are making some um, establishments in some areas which are like suppose uh, the the highland mountains where there is a lot of waste that can be created into maybe some some kind of a building structure now in one of the pictures you can see a sofa has been created or in a garden that can be created in a form of a, a big size planter or something or a dog house like over here i was seeing somewhere this has been created by the children in one of the societies in hyderabad from the plastic waste of their society so uh, then if we talk about the uh, waste that every day we are getting in the form of milk packets the milk packets the quality the material with which the milk packet is made is totally totally recyclable but what we do we most of the time uh, throw away those milk pa pass, uh, packet yogurt curd what we do we throw it into the bin and that ultimately it goes into the landfill or it 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 is not 
put to use but small little change in our day-to-day -day, um, lives by just washing it drying it and collecting it there are so many centers now coming up that collect these milk packets and they give you some money also in return so this is a good way to uh, get rid of this plastic waste in a more uh, more sensible manner right so uh, then making some, uh, I have put this picture from my own school, uh, bringing the sparrows, bring, bringing the little birds back into the ecosystem, you will find in urban settings, a lot of pigeons, especially those uh, gray ones, the gray pigeons are not very good for the environment. And they do, they do not contribute much when it comes to scavenging or uh, being uh, part of the food chain. The smaller ones, the smaller birds, the crows, all these are really important, but somewhere if you feel in this, in the, in this era of urbanization, we don't see those birds very often. So if you just, especially during summers, if you just make small bird feeders with some little water and some, some grains maybe where little birds can come and they can just uh, have that. So it will be nice. And uh, that is a positive step towards environment, creating more awareness. And uh, one more point I would like to put here. Many a times people throw food the, suppose the food waste they throw under the tree under the tree or sometimes they throw flour or some some leftovers under the tree thinking that some animals will eat it or the birds will eat it no what happens the uh, ants and the insects from the soil they come up and they eat those uh, food items and then what happens they make the roots very loose and the roots lose the hold of the uh, the tree loses the hold on the soil and maybe not immediately but in a couple of years such trees die so so they we need to be mindful where we are keeping our stuff what kind of actions we are taking now over here, uh, I'm just toward the end of my presentation, another two, three, two or, uh, slides. Uh, managing the e-waste is also coming up as a, um, as a challenge for all of us because most of the times uh, we don't find uh, proper vendors. We, we don't find proper people who can give us some value for money for this e-waste. But then, and we, what happens, we end up throwing it into the dustbin, which is, which is very incorrect because they are having a lot of, um, there can be a lot of chemicals, there can be a lot of um, harmful metals which are just left if you are going to put it into the landfill, they will maybe harm the microorganisms, flora and fauna. So it is very important that we find the correct, uh, correct step, the correct exit to the, they should be given a proper closure in a correct form. The people who are really taking um, the e-waste uh, and they are ensuring that the various parts of e-waste are disposed well. So I have created a small little uh, picture over here. All these, uh, when we talk about uh, e-waste, it uh, affects these six SDGs. Agar, if you are doing it in a proper way, then SDG 6, SDG 3, SDG 40, uh, 14, 12, 11, and 8 is taken care. Right? So uh, now let us uh, talk a little bit about sustainable fashion. I was talking to you about slow fashion, then conscious fashion or circular fashion. Uh, we can always, uh, we can, we are using these terms these days, ethical fashion, apparel industry in itself is such a, such a huge impact.
when it comes to the use of water and the uh, the carbon footprint that it is creating a lot of air pollution however it may not be um, we may not bring it from some mega store or maybe sh uh, shopping online so this is responsible for so much of habitat destru destruction for so many species even uh, small children are used in so many uh, industries and there are a lot of human right abuses also water pollution i've already mentioned then so much of animals are suffering because of uh, some particular brands of uh, apparels which are making a lot of uh, impact on the environment so we need to be conscious we need to be mindful uh, if you talk about these days thrifting swapping or renting of apparels is going um, uh, so much in news then going vegan and going uh, cruelty free whenever you are buying an apparel please look for the uh, for the tags there is a symbol of organic yeah there may be symbol of sustainable development or there may be a symbol of responsible manufacturing or the use of natural dyes or they may be just written eco-friendly uh, in some so go for such kind of uh, such kind of fashion now why i am using all these terms because we are all people from science right so science when we think in a scientific way we look for solutions so I have discussed problems also, and I'm trying to give you solutions also uh, as, uh, as a, a very minuscule member of the Society of Science. I feel that this is my responsibility as an educator, as an environmentalist, that I reach out to people. I talk about it and I make people talk. If people are going to talk maybe some some of them may uh, get affected and they go for uh, the better choices now the children like uh, i often uh, take this uh, uh, this uh, point to young children and i would uh, because over here we are having a lot of uh, population uh, um, from students, student population from college, whenever you are going for a wedding, your own wedding maybe, you can go for a plastic free wedding or a low waste wedding, if not a zero waste, zero waste is so not possible at all. So you can always uh, go for opt for such kind of changes in your lifestyle. Otherwise, plastic free yeah eco-friendly festivals whether it is christmas whether it is diwali whether it is any other festival uh, going eco-friendly for festival purposes for your birthdays or just removing uh, some of the items from your life completely uh, which are causing a lot of damage to the environment suppose i say that i will not use straws in future whatever my life is left i will not use plastic straw such kind of any one resolution you can just create and that is going to really make a difference similarly plastic free very sorry, all... to, interrupt, very sorry yeah. to interrupt we are really enjoying the presentation but participants are waiting for the question and session okay I am oh, just, uh, I have just uh, concluded, ma'am. Thank you so much. So, uh, thank you for providing this opportunity to me, uh, ma'am. And thank you one and all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a very hands-on practical session. The little tips and strategies you told us about will be really helpful for all the participants, I think. You touched the very practical areas and explained us how it can help us develop sustainable development. I think all over X now we will be focused on reducing the carbon footprints. Now we will be thinking in that parameter. Thank you for this insightful session, ma'am. Now I would like to invite Dr. Navneet, ma'am, and conduct the question answer session round. Thank you, Dilpreet. First, I want to give my congratulations to Ms. Pratishtha. What an informative session. 
only a thorough experienced biology educator can explain with so much simplicity and clarity. Basic sciences are vital to attain sustainable development and to improve the quality of life for people. We totally agree. Sustainability is no longer about doing less harm. It's about doing more good to others and to the society. And I loved what you have given Zero Waste Kitchen, Zero Waste Kit and Eco Bricks. Especially that house, it was really touch wonderful. So sustainability is important because we all are responsible to nourish our planet. This is what exactly Ma'am Pratishtha Gupta wanted us to understand. And real food should be delicious, safe, affordable and accessible to all, all without compromise. Thank you, ma'am. I think both the resource person has done wonderful job. And I think a lot of questions. I'll quickly move to the question session. Let me see the hand raise. Give me one sec. Hello, ma'am. Okay, sir, is already on me. Please, sir. Ah, yes, ma'am. This is Sri Ramulu from yeah, Hyderabad. I know. How are you? Great to see you. Ah, Please fine, ask your fine, question. <laughs> very, very nice session we have conducted. Uh, very useful for uh, for all the participants. So two uh, one for each uh, speaker. So ask both one are the one. Ask are... one one first, Mr. Yes. Loganathan. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yoga asana, uh, sir. First one is: uh, Is there any uh, mechanism that uh, you are developing some uh, cloths, not that eco-friendly cloths are? Uh, those cloths uh, fabrics are may, uh, made for uh, weavers also. I mean handloom. I think it is all for the uh, textile and uh, that power looms or maybe mills, but is there any uh, fabrics which are uh, specifically prepared for the hand-woven weavers? That is number one. Mr. Loganathan, this is your yes, question. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, please take it. Mr. Loganathan, if you're here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah please. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Uh, yeah, what you have been saying is to employ this kind of uh, handloom textiles for the yes. smart applications, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. it is possible to do. Uh, they already do several studies based on it, but uh, I feel using some sustainable polymers or sustainable resources to make uh, some energy devices are very limited at present. Uh, in future, we can sure. expect, uh, uh, yeah, they'll use that kind of sustainable polymers, uh, natural resource-based uh, polymers. Uh, to prepare some energy generating smart textiles. And uh, yeah, at present, we also do some project, maybe within one or two years, you can see some good uh, article that can be serving as a good reference for everyone, for sustainable sure. lovers. Yeah. I, I will keep in touch with you, sir, because I'm working on weavers problems. I'm doing research on that. Oh, okay. Your okay. next okay. question, okay. sir. Your next question. Uh, uh, Madam, to Madam generally, uh, Madam also presented very well regarding sustainable. So actually, I have attended some uh, Coursera courses in the sustainable development course. So after attending that uh, program, something like this one hour session, so generally people, we will be able to thinking about environmental and sustainable development, those kind of the things. So I would like to add two to three points to what the Madam said. So number one is uh, actually uh, when we order something online products, try to go for something like monthly wise or something like weekly wise. If we order once daily, something like two days, so the packing material is also wasted. That is another way. And second one is when we use like some something like shampoos or uh, or, or even that uh, milk packets. So if we cut that particular edge, left side or right side. So that will be again thrown into the water. That is also another important problem where we cannot, we cannot able to trace out that particular small parts. And uh, using public transport. So I am I am actually, I would like to say my example within one minute. So I am teaching environmental uh, sociology to law graduates. So I have to travel to Hyderabad every week once, once in a week. But uh, if I go by car, the university is ready to provide car. But I am, I am not willing to go because I attended this Coursera courses this is regarding the sustainable development course. And carbon emissions are more if I go by train, uh, sorry, by uh, car. 
that's why i have chosen this uh, public transport now i am great, going great, still sir amulu sir that. wonderful wonderful example yes, and yes. i think dr gupta has already given in the beginning only all these examples yes, yes. low yes, fa- low fashion used transport uh, used train you know she has beautifully explained all this how we can reduce the yes, problems yes. she has given the solutions Dr. Navneet, I think that sir was not asking a question. Maybe he his yeah he was adding up. He was he was adding yes, to yes. the he was enriching our entire discussion. Yes, yes, it was, it was so a nice. recapitulation of what yes. we have given. Yes, and it was so nice. Uh, yes, madam, and uh, uh, important. I'll, I'll I'll be a yes. little shorter because time is already over and there are many hands yes. raised. Yes. I want to take them. I will go to Orkuma Benjamin, please. Uh, we appreciate the, the lectures. We appreciate the opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ishaya or Johanna. Yeah, Arkuma Benjamin, please. You can unmute. Arkuma Benjamin. Okay, I'll go to next. Ukaksha Ibrahim. Ukaksha Ibrahim, you can ask your question, please. So Ishaya Yohana, sir, you want to ask also some question? Uh, not really. Just okay, to express just the appreciation for the opportunity. You. Thank you so much. Yes, I'll go to Babita you. Sharma quickly. Please unmute yourself and ask your question. Good evening, ma'am, and all uh, dignitaries sitting here. Uh, ma'am, I really uh, liked the presentation. I am also an educator. Right now, I am associated with school. and i am hod uh, chemistry in gbn school faridabad actually a uh, few days back i attended one fdp related to chemistry and uh, my fdp is quite relating to this topic uh, ma'am uh, uh, i just want to address few things uh, regarding the science labs because in science labs uh, we are using the chemicals and i am right now working on the same Eleven, uh, twelve. May we are having a lot of practicals okay. in which we use right. sulfuric acid. On this online engagement. Ishaya, sir, oh, please you need to uh, mute yourself. Ishaya, Johanna, please mute yourself. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Babita, ma'am, please continue about the labs here. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, ma'am in uh, chemistry labs we are using chemicals and uh, we are disposing that chemicals in the water bodies as well as uh, the fumes are not good for the children also and not for the environment and uh, right now i have started in my lab with spot testing method with the minimum use of the chemicals and resources because of the online and this icrt to please mute uh, if anybody voice is coming thank you icrt Yes, Pavita, ma'am, please continue. Yeah. You're really giving a great adding up, so yes, I want ma'am. to take up that case, <laughs> ma'am. Actually, for the first time, uh, any school is implementing this thing, and uh, I have initiated this thing in the schools. That is spot testing. Actually, this is practiced generally in the universities. and uh, we are not having the uh, resources of spot testing kits so i have made use of the watch glasses so instead of uh, taking too much chemicals in the test tubes we are going for the spot testing on filter papers and uh, watch glasses and definitely this is reducing the use of the chemicals and uh, their disposal in the water bodies wonderful and wonderful i i just process. want to uh, close Please. you here babita i really want a mail from you uh telling your experience and even will be sending this to cbsc also and uh, icrt can uh, even promote this to other people also uh, globally yeah. because this is something very good initiative and every yes. lab must adopt it talk to me congratulate you. you on that if you allow ma'am wants to add something yes uh, ma'am yes ma'am dr navneet now there yeah. is ma'am there is a uh, even i have attended uh, babita ma'am that uh, fdp that, that and it's it is uh, we call it micro scale kit and yeah, very yeah. easily we can develop it at our own labs also you just mm-hmm. need to buy those small little bottles of plastic which we often use as eye drops and uh, eye drops bottles and the chemicals can be stored and very small bo- uh, test tubes are available the entire uh, this uh, chemi- uh, chemistry lab uh, material is available these days if you go for this micro scale kit and in the process of 
of course not harming uh, the environment and all those not creating those um, yes. fumes it also adds value of conserving of minimalisting mm -hmm. use of minimalist uh, minimalistic approach uh, that you are doing babita ma'am uh, many congratulations yes. yeah pratishtha ma'am i need a favor from you kindly write your email id in the chat box because the examples you are giving the adding up the kits you know people will be needing your help so please yeah, sure, if you sure. can, if I you will, can I, email I even babita ma'am people can reach you out you know it's it's a wonderful platform for all of us to enhance our knowledge and take that to our institutions yeah i'll go to the next Bye. question thank you both the beautiful ladies thank you so thank much you. i'll thank go you. to umar saidi yeah please sir unmute yourself umar saidi please unmute and ask your question you need to unmute okay. yeah yeah please okay ma i am not to ask a question but rather is just to show my great uh, appreciation towards your sustainable development uh, on orienting the people about this unique presentation thank you thank you very much may god help you what thank is you what is much. your good name because the name coming on your screen is umar saidi what is your good name yes my name is umar saidi muhammad okay okay right wonderful thank you for appreciation dr fasana fasana i told is there great great to see you again i'm so happy to see you please ask your question thank you very much ma thank you welcome yeah dr fasania please come good afternoon everybody thank good you very afternoon. much this wonderful uh way of uh, educating us I want to really appreciate the two presenters. They have uh, actually showed that uh, really science is a gift, you know, a beautiful gift to humanity. Actually, I don't want, I don't have a question to ask. I want to just make a request that uh, this uh, papers presented uh, maybe can be made available on our email. Uh, it will so very, very- If you will go to YouTube, if you will go to YouTube, the whole uh, session is there. You just go to ICRT okay. YouTube. You'll be finding everything over there. Thank you. Okay. I'll go to Thank last question. Uh, it is Chesu Mada. Please unmute yourself. Please unmute and ask your question. I'm really sorry. We are already out of time, but still, I would like to take a few questions because it is such an important topic. Yes, Chesu Mada, please unmute. You need to unmute first. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate such a section because it's really educating. I really appreciate it. I just want to say thank you to all the presenters and I don't think I'll miss the next meeting. Thank you very much. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Uh, Ize Alake, you want to say, ask any question? I want to invite you, Ize Alake. You have to unmute yourself, yeah. Yes, sir, ask your question. Pandain, Peter, and Emmanuel, you're on the screen. Please ask your question. My, uh, my own is not really a question per se, but uh, I, I really want to commit the effort put in to that so to the... It's been very, very uh, impactful. For us, and uh, I think I commend you so much. It's it's really informative and impactful. I'm so, so happy today. I no question you. is coming, but yeah. Mr. Yes. Loganathan and Miss Pratishtha, everyone is appreciating what you have given to them. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, Kualu, uh, Mr. Kualu Yakubu. Kualu Yakubu, yeah, you can ask the question. You want to ask something? Your hand is raised, yeah. You're on the screen. You can speak, sir. You are already unmuted, yeah. Do you have any question? My voice is not going there. Okay, I'll take the last question now. Okay, Chukhu, you can unmute yourself. I don't have a question, Okay, Chukhu, Kenneth. Please unmute 
Yeah, you need to unmute and then you can ask. Okay, Chukhuku Kenneth. Sir, please unmute yourself. Yeah, please ask. Hello. Hello, can you hear yeah, me? Yeah. We can hear you, sir. Yeah. Please ask your question. Okay. I, yes, it's not really a question. I just want to appreciate the effort put in place for this uh, very important uh, lecture. I was able to understand the, the non-renewable and renewable energies or resources that aids, that help uh, society to, 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 to that drive society. And the other lecture, the woman lecturer was able to do a justice to how to make use of uh, your, your, your those, I could not remember, but it's really educative. But I want to also ask if this uh, our certificate will it you will get also certificate. You will get sir, that you will okay. get. It's it's okay. a different thing. Thank okay, you I'll very go much. to Mr. Ishan Dube. If yeah. you have a question, please unmute immediately and ask. Mr. Ishan Dube. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, very good evening. Very from, good evening. Uh, Hyderabad, uh, Discovery Oaks International School. Okay. Ma my question is to the ma'am. That uh, there was a one thing is mentioned was vegan and uh, something animal like that. So like uh, nowadays, if we talk about like um, whatever the dairy products and vegan from that, so people go for the taste and at all they will not understand the thing. So what you will say about it, like uh, animal pass through the so much of pain and all, and that will impact the definitely environment. So how we can make people to understand about it, man? Dr. Pratishtha, please, uh, this is a question for you. Madam Pratishtha, is there? Uh, I, 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 uh, uh, yes, yes. Can you hear me, ma'am? Am yes. I audible? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you for your question. What I am understanding, uh, maybe you are asking how to uh, differentiate between the vegan and uh, the animal based uh, diet or like animal based like, product like, as you I mentioned think, you know, like yeah plant based we can go yes, for yes. right but sir the so the idea is uh, sir i'm coming to that if yeah. you will just as i mentioned in the presentation also there is always a small little small a stamp kind of a thing at the back of your apparel that you buy sometimes it is on the sides also but if you are, if you want to educate, suppose you are in the school system, if you want to educate children or to the ladies or to anyone, you can always show them such type of labels in which there is a symbol of organic or they mention it that this is eco-friendly or they mention it as vegan. Yeah, no animals were harmed. Such kind of captions, if you will see, then you should try and adopt such kind of uh, uh, apparels and whatever products. Right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, my apologies. Uh, so many hands are raised. Already 15 minutes are up. I need to close. Dilpreet, I'll give over to you. Please take over for the vote of thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so I will conclude saying that proper use of science is not to conquer the nature, but to live with it. So I would conclude with a wish that may science be thrust upon everyone who believe in its being. Cheers to all those theories, all those strategies upon which our world exists. And as we keep discovering new scientific innovation will change the face of the world and we will surely achieve sustainable development. I would like to thank today's resource person Loganathan sir and Pratishta ma'am, you were really great. Thank you Navneet ma'am for coordinating the session so well and managing the things very well as you always do. Thank you Sandeep Kumar sir, Chairman ICRT, Secretary sir ICRT, Dr. Sandeep sir ICRT. Thank you so much Saima ma'am. The back-end team has done all the effort together. So thank you so much everyone. I would like to give a big huge of applause to ICRT for arranging this platform and giving us a knowledgeable platform to exchange our ideas and get so much from it. Thank you so much, ICRT. Thank you, Dilpreet. Such a beautiful, humble, 
organized, intelligent moderator we have. Thank you. Always to the point and the way you, you know, just take up the things, especially when you talk about the resource person's feedback. I really love that. Thank you so much. Uh, Great thanks to Team ICRT for giving such a global platform to each one of us. We may be from Nigeria sitting over here, from USA, from India. I can see people from Pakistan, Taiwan today, Malaysia. It's, it's a beautiful platform for each one of us where we are learning together, where we are evolving together, where we are enhancing our knowledge each and every day. Every session is a new beginning, I feel, and which help us tread towards sustainable development in every way. Thanks to both the wonderful speakers, Dr. Loganathan and Ms. Pratishta. Really, kudos to both of you, the way you have taken such a difficult topic in such an easiest way, where every, I think I was reflecting, they were learning amazing participation of each and every one. And we can't end this without thanking our chairperson, sir, Dr. Sandeep Singhamar, sir, who is a true visionary. Dr. Sandeep Sihag, who is the, I should say, backbone of ICRT, from where he finds such a resources, great network. Uh, Saima, wonderful uh, relation officer, full core team working so hard at the back end. Thank you each, every one of you. Uh, the sustainable development growth represent a clear economic imperative. Their achievement would mean greater productivity, increased employment and stronger economic growth once we start working together, wherever we are working, in any institution, a school, college, hospital, anywhere, we need to work. We need to go more deep in this. Thank you for this wonderful session. Bye-bye. Take care. Let's see you next time. Thank you, each, everyone. I'll request everyone quickly want to see their faces. I'm going to read the names because those who are here, if I can have a big screen ICRT, I'll be thankful to you. Bolanale, Dr. Abiyodhan, uh, Nargis, I'm really sorry. I was Your hands are raised, so I want to thank you first. Saidu, if, uh, Vikas Bhardavaj, Mukhtar, Abu Bakar, Akine Bola, or Kuma, yeah, you, I called you, but you were not there that time, Benjamin. I really wanted to uh, listen to your question. Collins, uh, Umar Abdullah, Ahmed, Riyanath, wonderful. So many great people. Okapan, Professor Kolawale, Margaret is there. Shashi Gupta, ma'am, is there from the beginning. Professor, thank you, each and every person who is present over here. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you, Loganathan, sir. It was great session with you. And we really want to be associated with you for a long term. Same goes for Ms. Pratish Chagupta also. Thank you. Thank Anybody you. wants Thank to you. speak? If ICIT is allowing, you can unmute and speak. I'm here for five more minutes, then I'll go. So you want to say something? Yes, Thank you. Mr. Thank Loganathan? You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The, the presentation was very educative. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Quite interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Wonderful time. Thank you. 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 Thank you to everyone. Thank you. I see E out. Thank you, everyone. We all are part of ICRT, one family. That is the beauty, I believe. Come on, you. Thank you. Come on, you. I close. Thank you. Thank you, ICRT. Thank you. Thank you, both the resources. I need to every participant from the different corner of.
this beautiful planet. Thank you. Thank you. See you, Thank you. See you soon next time. Bye bye. 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 Bye.